Deep neural network sizes have exploded over time. This chart that I got from archive shows just a few of the large models that were trained uh, between about 2018 and 2020 with NVIDIA's uh, Megatron LM getting above 7,500 or 7 million or 7.5 billion parameters. And this chart's actually already out of date. So GPT-3 has 175 billion parameters and there are sparse models with uh, trillions of parameters that have been trained. So how long can this increase in parameters go on? Well, some will say forever, right? Computers will just keep getting faster, allowing more and more and more weights. But uh, people who are familiar with computer architecture know that this is actually not correct. So if you look at uh, processor performance and CMOS performance generally, the era of both Moore's Law and Denard scaling are over. So there was uh, you know, a period between about the mid-1980s and the early 2000s where things improved at 52% per year. Then that slowed down to about 23% per year. Then that slowed down to maybe 12% a year. And uh, today in the 2020s, computer performance is really not improving very much per year. It's, it's uh, you know, a few percent in uh, power performance. So assuming hardware stagnation, assuming that we stay in this era where we're stuck with CMOS semiconductors that really aren't improving that much from generation to generation, how big can deep neural networks really get? Well, first, it's important to remember that modern computing systems are actually power bound. So the energy per operation is what limits the number of operations that can be done per second. Here's a chart from Mark Horowitz ISSCC talk in 2014, Computing's Energy Problem and What We Can Do About It, showing that the power density, the number of watts we can pump into every millimeter squared of a chip, has basically stagnated since 2005. So the real question is, how big can DNNs get at modern energy costs for computing? So, just to get a very rough idea, to put a very rough upper bound on it, let's assume that we can make a DNN where weights are 16 bits. We need to do inference in seven milliseconds, which is a common latency target that you see in data centers. The only energy cost is loading the weights from DRAM. So this is extremely optimistic, right? Because lots of other stuff costs energy, but let's just assume we can make everything except the loading of the weights from DRAM free. And let's assume that we can use all of the power generated by a nuclear power plant. So I went to the internet and grabbed some numbers for this. So a common number you'll see for the uh, energy cost of a single load of a 16-bit weight is 200 picojoules per load. Uh, assuming we need to do one load for every single weight or one weight per load, we need to do seven milliseconds per inference, and we have one gigawatt of power, which is a typical output of a nuclear power plant. That would mean that uh, modern <laughs> deep neural networks could have 35,000 trillion weights, which is way bigger than the biggest models today. Um, but of course, this is an extremely optimistic scenario, right? So. In reality, uh, you know, cooling, networking, compute, and other levels of memory also cost energy, right? So, you know, there's at least probably a factor of 10 on top of that uh, uh, weight loading cost. Real applications aren't just a big DNN. You have to run, you know, networking code and all kinds of application code in front of and behind the deep neural network inference. And real data centers run tens of thousands of instances of the same application. So when you actually take a more realistic look at it, um, you know, it'd be very surprising if deep neural networks at current CMOS technologies with a trillion dense parameters uh, actually get deployed in data centers for, you know, a big widely spread application. So hopefully that was interesting. I thought it was interesting to put an upper bound on uh, DNN sizes like that. And uh, if you thought it was interesting, I'll see you in the next video.